Thanks everyone for joining us uh, to hear about the making of the ATI Radeon HD 4890. We are in a secret underground laboratory where we make the 4890. <laughs> just kidding. This is actually just a, a facility across the street from where we work. This is a prototype, one of AMD's prototype facilities north of Toronto. And this is Chris Hook with me today to discuss the making of the HD 4890. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, ATI Radeon HD 4890? Well, thank you for uh, inviting me here today. We're really, really excited about the uh, Radeon HD 4890. Uh, this, uh, this product, we're announcing it this week. Uh, this will be uh, the uh, highest performing uh, graphics processor on the market when it's announced in a couple of days. Uh, tremendous array of features, great overclocking potential, support for the latest uh, image quality features, uh, and obviously a very, very compelling price point. So well, we're, we're really, really excited about this. Excellent. So what can you tell us? Why is this an important graphics card. What is it that it brings to the market? Well, for, for one, uh, you know, tremendous levels of performance. Uh, you know, that, that um, many people uh, who go out and buy a graphics card or buy a system, they keep that around for a couple of years, two to three years. And um, those people who bought a graphics card uh, two years ago, they're not getting to take advantage of DirectX 10.1. They don't have support for the latest image quality features. When you consider today that uh, most people uh, you know, keep a graphics card for a couple of years, but you look back to, to the kind of graphics card in this price point uh, that would have been available about two years ago, you wouldn't have had uh, access to the latest um, uh, DirectX, uh, in this case DirectX 10.1 image quality features. You wouldn't have access to, uh, to physics. You wouldn't have access to ATI stream uh, video transcoding. Um, so, and, and you wouldn't be able to, to play games at the kind of resolutions that reflect the kind of, of screens in people's uh, homes today. You know, when you think that today people go out and uh, they purchase a, a 1080p LCD dis display, well that's great for watching TV, but if you want to play a game on that and you want to max the image quality settings and you want to have great frame rates and no lag and you want to have a great crisis experience or stalker clear, clear skies experience, this is the card for you. You can't do it without technology like this if you're using a two-year-old graphics card. So tell us a little bit about the DirectX 10.1 experience you've uh, mentioned. Well, we've got uh, special technology in here, DirectX 10.1 support, and uh, AMD and ATI, we're, the, we're pretty much the only company that, that's got that. And what that means is that if you're playing a popular game like Stalker Clear Skies, Battle Forge, uh, Hawks, uh, or Stormrise, uh, you're going to either get better performance than you would otherwise just in, in basic DirectX 10 mode, or you're going to get enhanced visual quality and enhanced special effects. And when you see the difference, there's no mistaking that DirectX 10.1 is where you need to be today. Okay, so Chris, tell me, this, uh, this is an amazing looking graphics card. Now, what is what, what makes up the card that you're looking at right now? Well, you know, what's under the hood? So let's just uh, take it apart here. And there, there you can see we've got the RV790 ASIC, uh, which is the heart of the Radeon HD4890. And we've got eight GDDR5 uh, lightning fast memory chips to really give uh, maximum memory performance. Now GDDR5 is the fastest graphics memory on the market today, uh, is that right? Uh, correct. Um, largely uh, the spec was engineered here at AMD uh, by some of the uh, of the finest memory engineers in the world. Uh, this, these, uh, these memory chips were made by our partner Commanda. Uh, and really, uh, if you want to be able to game at those high resolutions, if you want to have those image quality settings cranked up, uh, you need those chips there to do that. But, you know, uh, all of these integrated circuits, there's so much power coursing through, the, through these devices, uh, they do get hot, which is why uh, our engineers have developed such a magnificent cooling solution right here. It starts with um, thermal, con thermal conductivity paste, which creates a thermal connection between the ASIC and this copper cooler. And then we've got this ultra-quiet fan that blows air past that to cool it off, and the result is a, uh, is a safe, quiet, uh, and cool solution so that you're able to, to take advantage of all that power but, uh, but still have a solution that isn't going to create a lot of noise in your working environment. And <clears throat> Dave, let me talk a little bit more about what a tremendous piece of technology the RV790 ASIC is. So this is made on the 55 nanometer process, which means that each of the 956 million transistors that we use to build this ASIC is one twenty millionth of a meter long. And when you consider that 
you know, back in the, the 70s, uh, a transistor used to be, you know, about half the size of a baby fingernail. And when you consider back in the 40s that a transistor would be the size of a man's fist, um, this really is a remarkable piece of, um, uh, of engineering. If you were to build this 956 uh, million transistor part out of old 40s style vacuum tubes, the device would be huge. It would take up would cover a lot of downtown Toronto. Uh, so a massive device. Uh, it would get incredibly hot. It would require three Hurricane Andrews to keep it cool. Uh, and it, it would require six or seven medium-sized nuclear reactors just to power it. So when you consider you get all this technology in such a small package, really it's an amazing thing. You're also getting 1.3 teraflops of raw compute power. Uh, to put that into perspective, that's about 130 times more uh, floating point power than what you saw in IBM's Deep Blue. Because everybody knows uh, Deep Blue was the supercomputer that IBM built in 1997 to beat Garry Kasparov of ch uh, at chess, and that took up an entire room. So to be able to get that much power in such a small package really is revolutionary. Sounds like an amazing card. Um, so tell us then, is it scalable? Uh, it is. Um, you use, um, if, you, if you look right here, on the board, you'll see two places here to connect the Crossfire connector cable. So you stick this in your system right next to it, you can stick a second one, connect the two, again using the Crossfire connector cable, and they come with the board. Uh, and then you can amplify your performance. Instead of getting uh, the performance of one of these, you can actually get anywhere between 60 and 100 percent more performance uh, by adding a second card. So, so really, uh, it, it provides a great upgrade path. Uh, if you, you put this in and you decide you want one of those new high-end cards that's ultra, ultra high-end sometime in the future, well, you know what? You can add a second one of these, protect your investment, and, uh, and get similar performance levels. So uh, really, the upgrade path is, is very clear. It's very simple, uh, and, and anybody can, can add it. It's just a matter of plugging it in, putting the cables across, and you're done. And so tell me a little bit about this uh, in terms of physics. I'm hearing a lot about game physics. Does this support game physics? Oh, absolutely. You know, when you're playing a, a video game, you want to be able to, when you blow up a spaceship, you want to be able to see it explode into a million pieces. You want to be able to see um, uh, fire come out of it. Uh, you want to be able to see that destruction. When you blow out a pane of glass, you want to see it shatter into a million pieces. Um, and uh, physics calculations are what make that happen. If you were to, to run physics calculations in more traditional ways, uh, you, you just don't have the compute power to be able to create uh, a mind-blowing experience. Uh, with today's physics engines, APIs, and with graphics chips like the Radeon HD 4890, you, you, you get a tremendous physics experience in games uh, that enable it. Uh, also, you, you can, you're able to use this tremendous graphics horsepower to transcode video. So if you're taking a big DVD and you want to be able to shrink it to fit it on your iPod, uh, this can accelerate it many times quicker than using uh, standard solutions today. So really, uh, an enormous leap, whether you're playing games, uh, whether you want, you're taking advantage of the best game special effects, or whether you're just taking a movie and crunching it to fit on your iPod, this is the solution for you. I think there's only one thing that, that it's missing, uh, and that's its overclocking ability. Or is there something to be said well, for that? Well, you know, too? that's one of the wonderful things about this. Now, this is stock clocked at 850 megahertz. Um, we're also offering an OC version, many of our partners are, uh, 900 megahertz plus. And we're uh, hearing reports, some gamers are getting as close to uh, a gigahertz of engine speed on this. So really, really, really remarkable the amount of performance that you can get out of this. Uh, our catalyst control panel allows you to go in and tweak those memory clocks, tweak those engine clocks to really uh, get that extra level of performance to add even more to your investment. So there you have it, folks. The, the world's most advanced single GPU, single board solution for gaming, and it is ready today. And and by the way, when you go to check out the video on this particular card, also stop by AMD on Process to see the rest of our great videos.